Hello, I'm Lux, and I apologize that my voice may be a little rough in this recording. And I'm Ember, and this is our thoughts on Miraculous, Tales of Ladybug and Chat Noir, Season 2, Episodes 11 through 14. I apologize for the roughness of my voice, as I said at the beginning there. And if it sounds, sounds a little muffled, I have a cough drop in my mouth right now. <laughs> I offered to wait, but he said he thought he could manage to edit the sound. I can edit it, but let's move on to the more important thing of, hey, we're watching Ladybug again. <laughs> Finally. It's such an awesome series in these particular episodes, especially the zombie one. All the zombie tropes without any of the blood and gore. Instead of brains, it's kissing. I, I, can't, I can't wait to actually watch it in the English dub, because that's going to be hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. Oui. And yes, by that, we're watching, still watching it in the French dub. I'm much more cooperative when things are in the original language. <laughs> but going back to the first of these episodes, I love the design of that pirate ship and her. They're getting creative with their costumes again, because that was a stellar thing in the first season of the show. The costumes for the villains were really good. And it was really fun. And when that episode first started, I almost thought it was going to be Luca. You know, it's always the quiet ones. Yeah, I thought it was going to be him too. But my, I have a new theory now that he's going to be not just important for this apparently mild love triangle they're trying to set up. But I think he's going to be another miraculous partner. Specifically the green one. So now we have our guesses for the full roster. The fox isn't a guess because... We already saw Alia, but the green for Luca, uh, the other female silhouette for the swords mistress who was akumatized into Repose. The peacock is going to be Natalie. That's our current set of guesses. They may change over time, but we're, we're thinking that's how things are going to go. Especially since I think Natalie is so set up for that because the idiot is missing what's right in front of him kind of thing. Yeah, it's right there. Also, we knew he was going to turn into a gorilla. Moving on to uh, another episode real quick. <laughs> yes, we knew the bodyguard was going to turn into a gorilla, and it's interesting that we got it after we had that fake out last time. Mm -hmm. they're, speaking of that, they're doing an amazing job on that. I know, because I was like, we're seriously going for Marinette. I've been waiting for this. But I don't believe you're going to do it in this episode. Not yet. The stakes aren't high enough. And I love how that whole scene was set up in that episode. Okay, she's going to touch it by accident or something. Something's going to happen. It's not going to be Marionette. It's going to be the teacher. It's going to be the lipstick. Because the lipstick was pointed out as something important. So, yeah, they were doing an excellent job twisting their own tropes. And... I love the fact that that, going back to the actual first episode here in our set, I, I love how he could play guitar and stuff like that. And I love how Adrian got to use his piano, his mad piano skills on the... Look, oh, I know this, I know this keyboard! Well, nobody knows how to use it. I didn't realize there was that much variance in electric keyboards that other than knowing how to play piano. Well, there's probably some switches and built-in stuff. Yeah, I'm sure to get a full customization, but I would think the basics are turn it on. <laughs> yeah, but there's different ways of turning things on. There's sometimes a power switch, sometimes a power button, sometimes you actually have to just put the batteries in or take them out. Crazy stuff like that. Sometimes there's a remote, sometimes there's a power brick. And the use of sound and everything in that episode was really neat, especially like sound blowing away the bridges. The, the Sonic Force, and also off, the officer, he just would not give up. I'm like, he just doesn't know when to quit. Yeah, he, he's not the smartest officer in the world. I, I was also laughing a little bit there because I just remember a scene from the upcoming zombie episode <laughs> where he tackles the mayor. That was awesome. And I like the fact that we're expanding things out, but we're still running into that problem of Oh, look, a new person. Or we've mentioned this person at the beginning of the episode. I'm like, ooh, ooh, ooh. Because <laughs> the beginning of the zombie episode was all about the teacher's birthday. And the beginning of 
the Captain Hard Rock episode, we didn't see Luca in the beginning. We saw the captain, you know, who was already showing, no, we're not going to keep this. Disorderly is the way we do things. So it was immediately setting up a conflict. I do like Kelly introduced Luca. He, he kind of like soothed Marionette. <laughs> and I don't think Marionette is just going to be instantly over Adrian. I think the problem is that here is a, another guy who is cute, well-composed, and kind who treats her kindly because she doesn't have this problem around other boys. She doesn't have this problem with Max or Nino or Kim or Ivan, most of whom are in relationships now that you think about it. Mm -hmm. And they've kind of added more, especially in the episode 14. <laughs> One of the other male student counterparts got hooked up with a girl. Well, before that, he was crushing on Chloe. Ah, uh, Chloe. Who finally got some character development that might actually stick. And there was some meta in this set of episodes. That was great. When the characters actually went, you're responsible for like half of the Akuma. <laughs> yes, though it's still very interesting to, it would be interesting to run a tally of ultimately who has more, Chloe or Marinette. Because Marinette has caused a lot on accident. Hmm. I don't think maybe the gorilla you could count as one for Cat Noir? That would be Adrian, and technically two for Adrian, because the baby is technically his fault, because the Akuma was originally sent after his bodyguard. Ah. But that's sort of more Marionette's fault, because she caused the issues that separated Adrian the bodyguard in the episode with that perfume commercial and the raving fans... That was all Adrian on his own. Marionette just kind of got dragged into it. She didn't instigate it. I guess this commercial was a really big hit because I thought Adrian was famous before, but apparently now it's like Beatles level. Yes, because the whole social media thing really reminded me of watching the Paul McCartney carpool karaoke where they're, they get to the part where they're pulling snippets off the internet and showing how everyone's vlogging the location and posting. And I love how her friends were just following along on their phones. And, and then they go, we're still waiting at the pool. Give us the details. Because poor Marinette out in her PJs, which didn't look that bad. But as a girl, I can say there's one important thing that no matter how um, much skin your pajamas might cover, you're missing a certain item you usually don't leave the house without called a BRA. <laughs> I love how you just spelled that out. Well, the YouTube statistics say our audience is mostly male. <laughs> uh, YouTube. I wish the algorithm would, like, launch some of our videos into the stratosphere, but hey. Hey, we got one. Yeah, just one. I wish I would have been able to capitalize on that at the time, but I couldn't. Oh, well. Back to Ladybug. And I, I love how it was basically the whole entire ship was a Kuma thing. It started with the compass, but the entire ship had to be broken. Well, they didn't know where the Akuma was, so the easiest way to find it was to break the ship. Because Chattanooga was like, hey, I'll just cataclysm it. Uh, there's prisoners? They might drown? Ooh, problem. It's like, I see what you're going for. I'll wait. <laughs> mm-hmm. Also, fun little bit there of Tiki getting Marionette out and Marionette having to pretend that she picked the locks with a jagged stone guitar pick. Uh, and for a second there, because of the way they set that up, I thought, like, if it's Luke, it's going to be like a guitar pick. So when he said, like, I got a ton of them, I'm like, yeah, I've been to a couple of concerts. They, like, throw these things out like candy. Seriously. Seriously. Got, like, four of them. <laughs> Actually, no, I just have the one, but it was they throw enough that it was actually by my feet and I didn't notice at first. Let's see. Is it the gorilla one right after? Yes. Okay. That was an interesting episode, too, because of the whole thing with the father. Yes, because he suspects his son of being Chat Noir. So now we have the reversal because a few episodes ago, Ladybug and Chat Noir were suspecting Mr. Grasse of being Papillion, and now it's the other direction. So 
So he's trying to flush out his own son, who trusts Ladybug so much that he's going to fall off the side of a building without transforming because he trusts Ladybug. Yeah, which comes into play in the last episode of this set. But let's stay here. So that whole scene with the building, the whole falling off, other than the being a nice reference to King Kong, there was a lot of references to King Kong and Godzilla. Because I think the name of the episode is actually Gorizilla. Mm -hmm. So there we go. You know, they always have King Kong versus Godzilla in some of these older movies. Like, I'm trying to figure, like, did Japan know about God? Did Japan know about King Kong? Because apparently it was a King Kong versus Godzilla at one point. I remember that movie. <sighs> also, I like the coloring and stuff of the gorilla. That was that was a really nice design there. Just the moment of transform, transform. He's not going to transform, is he? He's not Cat Noir. Let her go! Because <laughs> <laughs> if I lose him over this quest then that kind of defeats the purpose. And they're doing a nice job of, like, reiterating that, yeah, I'm going for that one wish for a particular reason. And both me and Ember are like, yeah, dude, you're kind of, you're kind of, you're being stupid right now. You've been stupid for a while, but... <laughs> but, you know, this whole supervillain thing to try and get this wish that's going to cost you what you really don't want to pay, trust us. You really don't want to pay the price of that wish. With great power comes great consequences. I love how they were teasing us in this episode that what Adrian wanted was just to see that movie. And then they finally, you know, it starts playing in the theater and we just see her hand. I'm like, oh my God, are they just going to tease us? And like, she's not shown the entire movie. They do tease us, though. We only get, like, a small glimpse. I would have to go back and pause the episode. Zoom and enhance. Zoom and enhance. <laughs> yes, but the film is called Solitude, and it's interesting that it's in black and white because it shouldn't be that old, so that means it's more of an artistic film. Also, if I recall correctly, it was a bourgeoisie production, meaning Chloe's family had a film production company. Hmm. Also, I'm wondering how many people tried to send emails to that email address that Adrian wrote on the cutout. Didn't he just give that one cutout to that one guy? I'm talking about in the real world. How many actual oh. people who watch the show... I get it now. Did he? Ha I didn't see an email address. I saw him write something on there and say it was an email address. I don't remember there actually being a nice shot of it that we could actually use. Yeah, it was like Adrian at com, Something nice. like that. I get what you're meaning now. Welcome to the joke. Though, who knows if they, if they, if the company did set up something, it would be interesting. It's like sometimes when they put websites in movies, they're actual websites you can go to because mm -hmm. the company set those up. Though, if you ever see a number in a movie start with 555, it's a fake number because that's a specific set of, there's a specific set of phone numbers that the phone company actually gave movie production studios to use. They're not real numbers, but they've set aside this block just for movies, so they're all dead numbers. So when you put them in a movie, someone's going to call that number, but it doesn't go anywhere. Because they're not active numbers. So I was thinking that was kind of smart of the phone companies, like, okay, Probably because they were called multiple times by movie production companies. I went, okay, we're just going to set aside a block for you guys. Here they are. Have fun. That's like why 8675309 Jenny shouldn't have been done because that was that's a real phone number. People still have that phone number in multiple area codes and still get the calls. There, there is at least one person who actually deliberately requested that number. They enjoy the calls. Please don't go try it. Please, please. These people get plenty of calls. Do something else with your time. Like learn how to draw. Learn how to speak a different language. Maybe Chinese. Or French. Bonjour. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I just heard that word enough that I can kind of say it i probably have a horrible american accent i apologize to any french people actually listening to this right now i am horrible at other languages i know i barely know the bits of spanish and japanese that i've heard <laughs> yeah your english isn't that great either oh yeah it's awful 
as the saying goes, I know two languages, English and bad English. And of the two, bad English is your primary. I spell so bad online, sometimes people ask me if English is my first language. I hang my head low and go, yes, yes, it is my first language. <laughs> They're like, we thought you were foreign. I know. Uh, but thanks to Amber, I now have... Well, thanks to Amber and Google, I, I now have people spell checking me all the time. <laughs> yes, yeah, so any typos you see in the videos are ones that he didn't have me check. Also in the descriptions, the art, anywhere on his Tumblr. That's all stuff I didn't look at before he posted. Because Google can only help you so much. It's not human yet. So have you said everything about the monkey episode? Well, we've talked about the first two episodes, but the problem is we watched the last two episodes more recently, so we're a little more fired up about those. Because we don't really have the time to sit down and watch two hours straight through. <laughs> well, theoretically we could when we have days off in common, but we tend to try to get other stuff done then. Like Marathon Ember's Reading Room recording sessions. <laughs> huh. Don't talk about the behind the scenes. Actually, go ahead. <laughs> uh, so, do you want to just move on to the episodes we most recently watched? No, I w want to mention a little bit more about the gorilla episode. Because the fans going crazy was... One thing, it was like Hard Day's Night meets Paul McCartney Carpool Karaoke. And Marinette stopped drooling. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was that was a, a great part of the episode at the beginning of the episode. Ah. She's sitting there with her mouth open, ice cream falling off of her spoon. I think it was cottage cheese, but still. Yeah, whatever it was, it was falling off the spoon. Mm -hmm. Just kept clicking, repeat, repeat. Marinette, I think you're getting a bit stalkery. Could you pull it back a little bit? Yeah. And also the Adrian's number one fan doing something really good with the perfume. Because that was the whole thing. When they introduced that it was a perfume ad, I'm like, okay, the perfume's going to be important to the episode. And it was because as someone with a very sensitive nose, I can tell you, oh my God, perfume messes with your sense of smell. Yeah, it's really strong stuff. People, you, you do realize that all you have to do is, depending on the type of bottle, but most of them is just a little tiny bottle. You put your finger on it, you tilt it over, that amount you have on your finger, you dab that on both sides of your neck where your um, jugular is, because it's the heat that releases it. That's all you need! And if it's an atomizer, it's one spray. Quite literally. You spray it in front of you and you walk through it. You're good. Yeah. It even says that on some of the bottles. Mm-hmm. And because you don't smell it anymore, that doesn't mean it's worn off. It means your brain is filtering it out. The brain is amazingly good at going, you know, this repeating noise in the background? We don't need to pay attention to it anymore. It's going to be there for a while. This is also why your brain will filter out white noise in the background, which drives me crazy because I hear it in the background of a recording sometimes. I'm like, noise removal tool. <laughs> and it's why you don't notice when the dryer is running, but you suddenly notice when the dryer shuts off. Or if you have a loud fan going, but you have to leave it on for a while, then when you turn it off, you go, oh my god, that was so loud! So, it was nice use of incorporating elements from the episode, because Adrian's new ad came into play in multiple ways. People were going crazy over it, so they were more fanboyish and fangirlish than usual. The perfume worked as a blocker. The movie gave Adrian motivation and gave us story development and also gave us a really awesome moment between Adrian and his father. Yeah, we need more of those moments to pull the father away from his evil plan. Well, we had two in this set because we had Adrian and his father playing the duet on the piano and then we had the thing with the DVD. The father needs to realize that he needs to appreciate what he already has and not what he's lost. Because, like, the best way to show you love her is to let her go. <laughs> and live the best life possible. Yeah, be happy. That's probably what she would want for you. And her son. You know, the son of both of you. Yeah, there's a lot of nice actual development going on in this season. Because in the first season, 
there wasn't much of this except for the first well i can't really call it the first episode but the pilot they showed at the end of the season and the christmas special which apparently was meant to be like an hour hour and a half long but the um producers were like nope cut it down to a normal length episode yeah there was a lot of content that was removed from that christmas special okay it felt longer than that when we watched it it may have been 45 minutes, but still was cut down from its original length. Yeah, I'm just saying, I think it was longer than a base episode. Which is a bummer once I found out, I was like, oh, really? I didn't really notice it, but usually teams do a good job of covering up, like, oh, we have to remove all this. Well, it did feel a little rushed. And that's one particular episode. Apparently, I should be glad that we watched in the original French, because apparently the American male voice actor can't really sing that well, and he's auto-tuned pretty heavily. Mm-hmm. For Chat Noir. Apparently the voice actor for Marinette is pretty good. But back to these episodes, like, there was, like, there's so much development going on. It's actually great. But we're also getting into the, yeah, the season's also all about selling toys. Because not only do we continue to have new akumatized villains, because every villain is a toy potential, but we have the introduction of more heroes with Reina Rouge, who we already saw earlier in the season and who has now made a return and based on the dialogue has made several returns working with Ladybug and Chat Noir and we now have the power ups for the Kwamis so there's a different transformation for each color of potion I love Plague <laughs> <laughs> I hate transformations <laughs> I love how they were shaped in cheese, though. He's like, gosh darn it. They probably infused it into cheese. I also love the incessant, incessant, I will get secrets out of you, Plague. I will. Here's this cheese. Here's this cheese. I hear this cheese smells really bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you know why this cheese has an orange rind? It's because they age it in... <laughs> Gutters made of the... Was it Sequoia? <laughs> uh, I don't remember. Uh, I just... Because of subtitles, I don't always catch everything, but I catch enough like, I'm enjoying this. Uh, back in college when I used to watch a lot of anime subtitled, I would have my hand over the pause button. <laughs> but that, that whole set of stuff. Cheese, Plague. Cheese. <laughs> like, he's like, no, no, I... I, I don't, I'm not interested in that at all. What did you say again? <laughs> nope. I will keep my secrets. Also, I'm a Kwame. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's true, Plog, but you know more than you're telling. And also a really nice moment there for Plog when Adrian was about to give up the ring. Go, what? Because I won't be, you'll lose your camembert supply? No, no, I'm sure another Chat Noir will get me Camembert, but they won't be you. Meaning he does actually care. Also, I love how sneaky that old guy is. Hello, Cat Noir. Holy sh- You! <laughs> like, wow, great memory, Adrian. <laughs> also, that poor girl at the beginning of the episode. The one who became the Akuma. Who got Akuma ties, I should say. Ah, uh, Chloe. Chloe. Yeah, let's just hope she becomes a nicer person so we don't have to worry about her anymore. <laughs> nice enough that she actually gets that slot in the Miraculous that we have uh, set aside for the Swordswoman. Not that that's what I want to happen, but that's how nice I want her to eventually be. And we, let's go back a little bit to that zombie episode real quick, because that, that was so good. <laughs> when I was watching the episode, I was like, oh my god. God, they're nailing all the tropes. And I'm like, I actually was like, wow, if I didn't know this was just kissing, I'd be like, oh no, not that character. Yeah, because the thing is, no matter what happens, we know that Ladybug can undo it as long as they win. I'm just waiting for an episode where she doesn't use her lucky charm. She can't reset things without throwing up the lucky charm and say miraculous ladybug because you know in this episode it was Raina Rouge who used her mirage ability and 
needed to go before she detransformed because Ladybug didn't use her ability because we heard her go detransformation, which is what you do when you haven't used your superpower. And in that episode, it also brings up the whole trust thing again because of how Adrian was starting to not like trust Ladybug because of the secret she had to keep. Because it was known now that, oh, you know who she is. Well, wait a minute, we're not allowed to know anything about each other, but you know who she is. And you're the keeper of her miraculous. Where did you get another miraculous? It's going to be interesting now that we have this whole thing. Also, the Guardian is inside the house of Papillion. Yes. And now he's looking for the Guardian. So it's going to be interesting. It's going to be very interesting. So... Number one, the master probably needs to make sure he doesn't bring his Kwame along. Though you would think it would probably be okay considering Plag lives in the house with Adrian. Because apparently the one place we don't have cameras is Adrian's room. Apparently. Which explains how he got away on the day with an iPod. Well, he's done that multiple times. This is just the first time he got caught. Mm-hmm. I wonder if they check on him now. Probably. Or if they put motion sensors on the windows. Ah. Also, that would take a lot of water to flood Paris. And I like the new designs for both Cat Noir and Ladybug. And I like the mermaid's design. It was very cool. It was a little less mermaid than I was thinking when he first spoke to her. But even though he called her Siren... And I was just thinking, you know, sirens are usually known for singing and drawing people to them. But apparently it was just kidnap the person I'm actually after. Who is so clueless that he's actually totally fine with all of this. He's like, well, this is cool. I can breathe underwater. I love the decorations. This is so cool. So wait, if I kiss you, then I can, I can swim as fast as you? Okay, awesome. Wait, I won't be able to go to the movies. <laughs> God, clueless. Clueless, clueless, clueless. At least he's not the major protagonist. I get really, really tired of those sometimes where I can understand it for like the first couple episodes of a series, but if you drag it on for the entire season of the male being clueless that every girl in the school is attracted to him, I get kind of tired of it. Well, there are only two in the school who are totally into Adrian. One is very blatant about it, but Adrian still doesn't get that Chloe's into him romantically. Yeah, but they're not, like, relying on it for all of their comedy. No. We haven't seen her do that type of interaction with Adrian for a few episodes. Also, speaking of Adrian again, I love his fake out in the zombie episode, <laughs> pretending he was infected so that he could get away. Because I was like, wait a minute, he didn't get... Oh, yeah, he's faking. Why is he faking? Oh, I get it now. They would leave him in the locker. Yeah, yeah. Even if they didn't leave him in the locker, they'd leave him behind. It was obvious he was faking because his eye color didn't change. Also, he was, when he um got a little over-kissed, <laughs> when he got got, got zombified, because that was, he kept no war, like, destruction, I'm after you! <laughs> <laughs> like, whoa, he's always dangerous when he's a bad guy. Very much so. Because, oh boy, that cataclysm. Mm -hmm. Also, I like how Chloe actually went, you know, Ladybug, save us! I also liked how throughout the entire the entire episode, everyone kept saying, I trust you, Ladybug. Mm -hmm. I'm like, that's heavy. Yeah. Yeah, everyone going, I trust you to fix this. <laughs> that's a lot of responsibility there. But the um, in a storytelling perspective, does that take away anything from their sacrifice? Because they are doing it with the full knowledge of she's going to save them. Does that take anything away from them sacrificing themselves to help further the plan? There's always the possibility that Ladybug could fail. Just because she's always managed to save them before doesn't mean she's always going to be able to. It does, I think, maybe lessen it a little bit because they're fairly confident that everything will be okay. It's not, oh, I know I'm going to turn into this ravening zombie and then you're going to have to headshot me, but at least you'll live. It's, 
no, I temporarily lose my mind and you fix this and it's all better. But you have to remember, it's just a kid's show. We can only go so far. I was just thinking, you know, from a storytelling perspective, does this lessen their sacrifice any because they're of the way they're doing it and the storytelling? Well, it's still a very unpleasant experience to go through. They still have to have the experience. And when you're not the one akumatized, you remember everything. So they still have the memory of everything that happened. Though that reminded me of a cute part of the, near the end of the episode where everyone's being de where the where that couple, the big boy. Maylene the, and Ivan. Maylene and Ivan, they, they are, well, they're still um, akumatized. Well, not akumatized, but affected by the akuma. They kiss and then they get transferred back and they go and they kiss again. I was expecting that. And also, I would like to know something with the effects of the Miraculous Ladybug. Because sometimes people and objects are physically moved back, and sometimes they're not. Because in Captain Hard Rock, everyone who was originally on the boat was moved back onto the boat, and the boat was moved back to where it was. But in the zombie episode, when everyone was freed from the influence of the cook, Akuma, they stayed where they are. So is the difference just that in the one where they stayed where they were, they were affected by the Akuma? Because in the Captain Hardrock one, they weren't affected by the Akuma, they were actual prisoners. Hmm. And I don't think I ever got to finish saying my lines about the toy line, because for each transformation, you get both a new Chat Noir, new Ladybug, new plog and new tiki because the kwame itself transforms and then the transformed kwame transforms the human which was not quite what i was expecting when the master fir tr first tried it out and said ways transform yourself i'm like the humans stay on the sidelines now y y you send the kwame to fight that doesn't seem right and that doesn't match the pictures in the book yeah and i think i would actually slightly spoil the design of the kwame because I think I saw their designs online on Tumblr a while ago. But I forgot about them. So hey, it was still a new experience for me. And I like how it seems that each generation the costumes are a little different. Because what the Master was thumbing through in the Grimoire wasn't what we saw Ladybug transform into. Though they were very clearly mentioned the Aqueduct powers. I'm like, oh, that's the one we're going to need this episode. We need the Aqueduct powers, so we have to figure out the potion. Yeah, that's a really a problem with formulaic kids shows that rely on a partial formula especially since ladybug's like breaking it down a little bit but they're still relying on it as a backbone in these kind of shows you actually have to do the whole here's the thing that's going to solve the problem and you put that at the beginning of the episode because you're going to it's like going into a legend of zelda temple the item you get in there will be the item that defeats the boss so it's kind of like that at the beginning you get the item and that's going to be the key to solving the episode but going back to what we were talking about with um shira and how, like, that whole introduction thing is like, can you introduce it in a different episode than the episode you actually use it? Like, could we have introduced these particular Kwame powers in a different episode where we didn't have to use them? And then use them later? And we can go with that aha moment. Like, now would be a good time to use that power. Unlike the times where they've introduced characters with powers and they get into situations where they're like, why didn't they use that power? Because that power would have worked perfect right there. We did get a slight introduction of this because we were told in earlier episodes that the grimoire had a lot of information about unlocking abilities but to be told that they're done by potions that we're working on them and what some of the potions do and actually use a potion all in the same episode is a little rushed though i think they give a hint of what the next power they're going to be using is because at the end of the episode when like tiki is talking about the different colors I believe in the subtitles it says, this one's frosty or something. Tiki goes, that blue one looks delicious. And Marinette goes, well, you'll have to wait and see that it's a little frosty. So obviously it's the ice one. So we have water, but we have a separate power up for ice. So that may be a hint of the next power up they're going to be using in an upcoming episode, which we'll eventually get to. It'll be interesting if Ladybug and Chat Noir always pick the same power-ups at the same time now that they have all the potions and get to make the choice also will they both use the potions at the same time because they have to be de-transformed to give the potions to the kwamis which means they can't be by each other hmm gotcha 
Yeah, it would be interesting to mix and match them in the episodes. This one, they just needed to be both the same because water, water everywhere. <laughs> also, the potions were coming from a single source. Now that each of them has their own supply. And I wonder, will the Guardian continue to come in to help teach him Chinese? Or is this just a one-time thing to help tell him, uh, tell him like, I'm going to be telling you stuff. Come to this address when you get the chance. Well... They've already said that Marionette shouldn't go there too often because it's dangerous. So it's probably just going to be one because his cover is that Adrian's Chinese teacher is ill. He is a substitute. So he can't do it constantly because eventually that teacher is going to show up. Unless he's arranged, actually made arrangements with that teacher. Hmm. Which could be as simple as, you know, saying that Adrian is unavailable for X period of time. Just a basic note. Nothing esoteric. So I think we should wrap things up for this? Well, we have to touch on one last thing for the transformations. Are they going to let Reyna have any? I was thinking about that, too. Will they give her... Because it would have to be kind of, once again, where Adrian can't see. So Marionette would have to provide both the Miraculous and the Potion. But she could technically do it without getting the potion from the master because she could hand over one of her macaroons. Oh, and one thing we didn't touch on, we don't very often get Papillion's transformation sequence, and we very rarely see him detransform talking to Novu, and we got both in this set of episodes. That was a really nice transformation sequence. Very nice. I wonder if we're ever going to get an episode where Papillion actually has to help Ladybug and Cat Noir. Because he's technically part of that whole Kwame thing. Will there actually be a thing where it's not him who's causing the trouble? And he has to help because if he doesn't, he could risk losing the Miraculouses. Or he thinks Adrian's in danger. Mm -hmm. Because here's the thing. Papillion, at least in the books, he's one of the core members of this Miraculous set. So... Theoretically, his character wasn't always a bad guy in the past. So what were they fighting against in the past that needed people like Ladybug? Because Ladybug's abilities, because she's the one who purifies the Akuma, but the Akumas wouldn't need to be purified when Noru was with someone good instead of with someone evil. Because the only reason Papillion is evil is because... The human Noru is with is behaving in an evil way. Because they bring that up too. That's why the Kwamis aren't supposed to know the recipes in case their miraculouses fall into dark hands. It limits the power that can be put to the side of evil. Yeah, it just makes me now wonder, like, what, what were they fighting against in the past? And why haven't we seen any of that now that we have all this activity going on in Paris? Or anywhere else, because if we go all the way back to the episode at the museum with the archaeologist who was transformed you know there was that stone tablet that showed ladybug in egyptian times which means not only very long ago in the past but a whole nother continent so what was going on then you know is there some more overarching power that the Guardians are supposed to be protecting against? And if so, where is it, and when is it going to show up? Because that just struck me when we were talking about it. I was like, wait a minute, Papillion, that power hasn't always been this way. So what were they fighting against in the past, and is that going to show up? And if it does, would that be one of the episodes where Papillion's like, shoot, if I don't help them... And how would he go about helping them? Because Noru's ability is... Basically, you give a power to your chosen champion. So does he manage to akumatize Ladybug or Chat Noir to give them a power boost to beat whatever it is? Interesting. I wonder if they're ever going to use that. Hmm. Something to think on for future episodes. Mm -hmm. Speaking of future episodes, we will have some. This is the end of this one. <laughs> so this has been our thoughts on Miraculous, the tales of Ladybug and Cat Noir. Season Two episodes, 11 through 14. Yay, we're back to Ladybug. Isn't this fun? But 
Yeah, uh, enough of that. Actually, because the episode's over, you're here at the outro. So, now, we, we have a few options for you here at the outro. There is like, subscribe, dislike, a bell to ring, comments to make, other videos to watch, and links to click. Those links in large categories are Lux's art, Lux's Tumblr, Lux's coffee, Lux's Patreon, and possibly some Amazon referral links that get us a little bit of a kickback. You're all internet savvy people. You know what these things are and how they work. Go. Play. Have fun. Master say have fun. Fun! <laughs> Oh, and yeah, I, I have this whole Ember's Reading Room thing where we do children's books, so that technically falls under the watch other videos, but they're more about books, which aren't necessarily pop culture. They can be, but not always. And this has been our thoughts on Miraculous, the Tales of Kitty Bug... Kitty Bug? Keeping that... <laughs> Thank you so much for watching and listening. We appreciate all of the support that we receive in the form of views, likes, comments, dialogue, suggestions, and of course financially as well. But all of it is truly appreciated. Thank you to all of our supporters, subscribers, etc. in whatever form you choose to grace us with your presence.